Hey guys, Robert with 3D Primescape. So last week I did a video covering the difference between the SKR Mini E3 V2 and V3, and I had a lot of people asking about firmware. So I'm gonna do two videos covering the firmware. Uh, this video is just gonna be the basics, kind of covering the options you have uh, utilizing what's already pre-built from uh, Baytree Tech. And then the next video I'll release is gonna be doing a custom firmware build with Marlin. So what we're gonna do today is we'll jump over to the computer. I'll talk about what firmware options you have based on how you're wiring it. Uh, go into what you actually wanna download and put on the SD card to go ahead and update the firmware. And then uh, kind of go into any tips that I have along the way. So if you guys have any questions about the process or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. All right guys, so we're here at the computer. Uh, this is Big Tree Tech's GitHub page, which is where you're gonna have all of your firmware and hardware information on pretty much all of their boards, but this is for the E3 specifically, so it's gonna have the information for all of their previous models in that line. So if you go into firmware here, you got the 1.0, 1.2, 2.0, 3.0, uh, which is what we're gonna be doing the video on today. So a couple things before we get into the firmware that I wanted to show you. If you're looking for information on the hardware itself, if you go into hardware here, uh, go into whatever board you have, so the 3.0 in our example, uh, go into hardware, you can actually get different pinouts and stuff. So you can actually see what the pinouts are or detailed overview of different things. So here's the full pinout. So if you're looking like for where to plug in the um, BL Touch as an example, it shows all of that on here and it shows you what each of the pins are. Um, this is helpful if you're trying to do custom firmware as well. So not too relevant to the firmware, uh, just something that I thought was uh, useful and I wanted to show you guys. Uh, but there's a bunch of different resources in here that are worth just reviewing, um, especially if you're new to working with the SKR boards. All right, so going back up to the main E3 repo, if we go under firmware, We'll go into the V3.0 and then we'll go into Marlin. I will be doing more videos in the future covering Clipper firmware. Um, I'm just not quite there yet. I haven't had the time to dig into it enough to really be able to teach people. Um, so that's something that I plan on doing more. Um, but for now, we're just going to stick with firmware. But this is the first board that they have that has pre-compiled firmware for it. Uh, like if you go to the 2.0, you don't have anything in there for that at all. All right, so if you go into Marlin, you'll be able to get the firmware for the different printers. So if you have an Ender 3, you're gonna follow uh, one of those lines, um, or there's more information in here. This, and then if you have the uh, 5 Pro or 6, um, they have uh, the firmware for you as well. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out, which I don't have a good example here, they have it on the 2.0. So let me just jump back over there really quick. It's what firmware to actually get. Here they kind of show you what each of the uh, file names are. So if you have the BL Touch and you're plugging it all into the BL Touch port and you have your Z-Stop still connected, you're gonna to wanna to just use the BL Touch firmware. Uh, if you have it wired so that you have the three pins into the servo ports and then your probe stop plugged into the Z-Stop port and your Z-Stop not connected, you're gonna to wanna to use the firmware with the Z-Homing. Um, I, like I said, I went back over to here on the 2.0 because they have the diagrams. Uh, they did not have that on the 3.0, at least last time I looked. Uh, so it's easier to visually show you that than to try to explain it. So here, if we had the BL Touch connected to the BL Touch port, which I'm assuming most of you guys do, or even the CR Touch, if you have any of the newer ones that have everything connected to the five pin uh, pinout, um, you would use this firmware. Now there's a couple ways to grab the firmware. I like to go up to the top repo and then just go to code and download zip. I've had some issues when trying to just get like one of the individual files out. Uh, you can grab it, but sometimes it comes in at a different size. I've had some just random issues with it. So for me, I just download the zip, which is everything in the repository, and then I'll extract that, which I'll show you here in a second, and then we'll put that on the SD card. All right, so here is the file we just downloaded. We'll go ahead and unzip that here. All right, with that done, we'll go ahead and drill into the folder. So just go into there. It's gonna appear the same way it did inside of GitHub. So we'll just go into firmware, uh, 3.0, Marlin, then we'll have all the information here. We're just gonna grab this one and uh, copy it over to our SD card. And then from there, you'll just rename it to firmware.bin. 
Uh, for those of you used to working with the Creality boards, you would typically want to have a unique name um, because if you don't, you can end up with that infamous blue screen. Uh, with the SKRs, it's not an issue, so it's just going to be firmware.bin. And that's the only thing you're going to want on the firmware or on the SD card. And then what we do is go ahead and remove that SD card, uh, go put it in the printer and power it on. That should pull the firmware in, and that's really all there is to it. To answer a couple questions really quick that typically come up related to firmware upgrades, um, the SD card should be 8 gig or less. Sometimes it does work with 16 gig. It's just hit or miss. Uh, it should be formatted as FAT32 and you should only have the .bin file on there. Once the firmware has been uploaded to the printer, uh, you should be able to tell under the about screen or if this is the first time you're going from the stock firmware to the BLTouch firmware, uh, you'll start to see the BLTouch menus in there. And then once the firmware has been uploaded, you can go ahead and remove the SD card and then delete the .bin file from the SD card. You don't have to keep it on there. But if you have any questions about what I covered or would like to see any other videos, uh, go and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And as a reminder, the next video, uh, which I'll link to in the description below, is going to be covering the Marlin builds. Uh, I should have that out within a couple weeks or so. All right, guys, so that was a quick video covering the upgrade process uh, for the SKR Mini E3 V3.0. Um, like I said, that's just following uh, Big Tree Tech's firmware upgrade process and using their firmware. My next video is going to cover custom Marlin build for this board. I'll kind of go into some of the requirements if you're adding the BL Touch, filament sensor, that kind of stuff. So I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for that one, so that will be the next video I release. Uh, but until then, I was hoping to get this one out uh, just to kind of get people started if they want to just upgrade the firmware based on Big Tree Tech's uh, latest build. But if you have any questions about what I covered or would like to see any other videos, uh, go and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.